Exponents, types of numbers and higher roots. Well, part one, types of numbers. Well, just like people, numbers can be classified into different groups. Now, when you think of the most basic type of number, it starts at one and it keeps going up without decimals or fractions. We call this the natural number set. When we add zero to this, we get the whole number set. Notice the natural number set circle is inside the whole number circle, which means that all natural numbers are also whole numbers. At this point, we have not talked about negative numbers. So the next type of set is the integers number set. And it is all numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity that don't have decimals or fractions. Finally, we have to talk about numbers that are in between the integers. Now, we call this rational number. So a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. So what does that mean? That means that any number that can't be written as a fraction would be irrational. Now notice, this is not in the same circle as the other ones. Why? because natural whole numbers and integers are all considered rational numbers. Irrational numbers are a different set and they have nothing in common. Finally, notice this is all in one big circle. We call this, when we combine the rational numbers and irrational numbers, the real number set. Now this usually brings up a question like, do you mean that there's an unreal number set? And the answer is yes, we call them imaginary numbers. However, you don't need to worry about that right now. Now, we mentioned rational versus irrational. And we figured out that a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction where m and n are integers. So here's the thing, you cannot have a decimal inside a fraction. That's improper notation. Now, how do we know when we look at something if it's irrational or not? Well, the fact is, is that when we look at decimals, there are two types of decimals that are rational. There are decimals that are repeating. Now, what does that mean when it says repeating? It means the pattern occurs over and over again. Notice I've given you an example of 0.333. Now, this is equal to 1 over 3. And if you punched 1 over 3 into your calculator, you would get 0.333 repeating. The other type of decimal that is a rational number is called the terminating decimal. And that is basically where we have a finite number of digits. So example, 0.2. Notice that 0.2 stops or terminates. So that means that we can convert this to a fraction. So how do we convert this to a fraction? Well, we look at the last number that we have, and we ask ourselves, what digit is this in? The two is in the 10th place, so I'm gonna make it two over 10. And of course, we always reduce our fractions if possible. So, what are irrational numbers? Well, an irrational number is a decimal that does not repeat and does not terminate. Example, square root of three or pi. Either of these, when you punch into your calculator, does not appear to repeat or terminate. I'd like you to try these examples, label them as rational or irrational, and I will do them in a minute. So stop the recording now. All right, so let's start with a two over three, rational or irrational? Well, that's already a fraction which is the definition of a rational number, so it's got to be rational. How about 6? Well, I can write that as 6 over 1, which makes it rational. Negative 14? Well, it's an integer, and we know that all integers are inside the rational number circle. Therefore, it's got to be rational. 0. 0 is a whole number. All whole numbers are rational numbers. Therefore, it's rational. Point three, four, one. Well, we've got a decimal. Does this decimal repeat? No. Does it terminate? Yes. My last decimal is point, my last number is in the uh, thousand spot. Therefore, 
This is 341 over 1,000, which is a terminating decimal, therefore it's rational. How about the square root of 41? Well, I punch this into my calculator and I get that number. Now, nine is the last decimal on my screen. However, it takes up the entire screen, so we assume that it's gonna keep going. And we also notice that nothing here repeats. We assume that everything after the nine does not repeat. Therefore, it's, we believe it's irrational. Could it be rational? Yeah, it's possible it might terminate or repeat later on down the line, but for now, we assume with, we work with what we've got. G, 8.76412.1212. Again, notice we have something that repeats at least three times. So we're gonna say that that is rational. Again, this is an assumption because we don't know what goes on after the last digit on our screen. Square root of 200. I punch that in and I notice that it goes all the way to the end of my screen, which means I believe it does not terminate. And I do not see anything that repeats, therefore I'm gonna assume it's irrational. Finally, 2.34 with a line over it. That line means repeating. Therefore, this is a rational number because it is a repeating decimal. My second thing that I want to talk about today is called higher roots. Now, we already found how to figure out higher powers. We're going to talk about how to find higher roots. So let's start with 9 to the 4th power. If I wanted to calculate what this equaled in standard notation, I would punch it into my calculator like I did in lesson number 1, where I would punch in 9. Then I want to tell it that I want it to do a power, which on my calculator is y to the x. You might have something else. Then I would want to say what the exponent I am taking that to. And finally, equal sign. When I punch this in, try it now, you should get 6,561. Now, if I wanted to work backwards, I would ask, be asking myself, what is the fourth root of 6561. Now, what is this really asking? It's asking us what number multiplied by itself four times is equal to the radicand or 6561. Now, doing a higher power and a higher root are inverse operations, which means that we do the opposite. So when we do the opposite of a button, we use the second function or shift or inverse or arrow going up to do the opposite. So what we need to know is what type of calculator do we have? Do we have an on-screen or a non-screen? You can tell whether you have an on-screen by punching in the square root of some number and it will actually write the symbol out. If you have an on-screen, we're going to type this in as we see it. So the first thing we see is a four, or the root index. Now we want to take the fourth root. So we want to do the opposite of a power or opposite of y to the x, which is second function y to the x. Now we want to state what number we're going to do this to, which was 6561, and equal sign. We should get back to nine. If you have a non-screen, which means it doesn't write it out, except for just the numbers, then you have to reverse the numbers. You start by writing 6561. Then we still want to do the opposite of a power, which is second function y to the x. And finally, we want to put the power or the root index of 4 and equals. Both of these should take you back to 9. Try these questions and I will do them in a minute. So stop the tape now. Okay, so seven to the sixth, you should have gotten 117,649. The fifth root of 200, or what number multiplied by itself five times equals 200? Well, I punch that into my calculator and I get a long decimal because it is a 
your rational number. So what I'm going to do is round it off to a rational number. So I'm going to round that to 2.9. Finally, the fifth root of negative 32. Now, hang on, I thought we couldn't take roots of negative numbers. Well, that's sort of true. The fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2, if you punch that into your calculator. So why does this work? Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So I wouldn't be able to take the square root of negative 4 because there's no number that multiplies by itself that would give me negative 4. However, I could take the cube root of negative 8 because negative 2 multiplied by itself three times is negative 8. I can't take the fourth root of negative 16 because there is no number multiplied by itself four times that will equal negative 16. Every time I multiply negative 2 times itself four times, I would get positive 16. So finally, this is the fifth root. If I multiplied negative 2 times itself five times, I would get negative 32. So I know that this is possible. Now, hopefully you'll notice that 2 squared and 2 to the fourth only have positive answers. Therefore, we can, and those are even radicands, sorry, even root indexes. So what does that mean? We can't take an even root of a negative number. Notice, negative 8 and negative 32 are odd, and we can take them. All right, let's look at example number 6. Notice, it is the fourth root of negative 16, which means it's not possible. So what wording do we use to represent this? We always call this no real solution. All right, how do we estimate we using perfect roots for higher roots? Well, we're going to follow exactly the same strategy we use with squares. First, we need to list our perfect cubes and our perfect four. So, there we go. Now, just like before, I need to know what perfect cubes are around 300. I know 300 is in between 216 and 343. So I know that my answer is going to be somewhere in between 6, the cube root of 216, and 7, the cube root of 343. So, just like before, I'm going to find out the distance between my root and my perfect root. Now, this isn't nice, nearly as convenient as square roots, but I know that 216 is 84 from 300, and 300 is 43 from 343. So, what does that mean? Well, that means my answer is closer to 343 than 216 which means my answer is probably going to be 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, .6, or 6.9. Now, is it a lot closer or a little closer? And it's kind of halfway in between. So I'm going to say that it's probably halfway in between 6.5 and 6.9, or 6.7. If you went with 6.6 .6 or 6.8, you'd probably still be correct, because it is an estimate. All right. Let's do the same thing with the perfect fourths. The fourth root of 900, well, that is in between 625 and 1296. So I know my answer is gonna be greater than the fourth root of 625 or five, but less than the fourth root of 1296 or six. So how far are these away from 900? Well, 625 is 275 away. 1296 is 396. Now, so what does this mean? Well, my answer is closer to 5 than it is to 6, but only by a small amount. You may think it looks like a large amount, but it's pretty close to being in the middle. So I would probably say that my answer is going to be 5.4 or 5.5. And since this is an estimate, either one of them would probably be